high and this is the second part concerning this tow missile you can see that there are several electronic boards on that area we can see two boards here there are two other boards here one is destroyed this one here the large part is missing and i guess that there is another one on the bottom side here I would like to remove this part, but actually it is impossible because as you can see this thing is bent there is a slot on the steel part this, this thing and this metal thing was bent into the slot here so it is absolutely impossible to separate these two things so I think I will cut along this line here this way it could be possible probably to separate this front stuff from the rest of the missile I will try with this tool Okay, after 10 minutes I have separated that thing. Okay, I don't know what is inside uh, this bottle here. This is the electronic side of the tow missile. The boards are potted in this kind of foam. It will be difficult, I think, to remove the board from this stuff. Well, this thing is a connector. You can see that this board has seen better days. It seems that we have two power amplifiers here in TO3 package, so this is probably something like that. It can be interesting to do the reverse engineering of this complete stuff, even if it is not complete. Maybe we can have a rough idea of how this thing works. Okay, I will go outside. This thing is quite annoying, with a lot of stuff. Look at that. And this one is just uh, separating the PCB. Look at that. This is the first board. Look at that. It is very clean. It was protected by the potting. So we have three ICs. The pump, probably. There is a dead code, 77, so this is the military part, and this one has only 6 pins, which is maybe a dual transistor, I don't know, otherwise we have two big silver red mica capacitors, and the connections are provided on the top of this board here. So now I am going to remove this one. After two hours, the boards are totally clean. I have done also the complete reverse engineering of this board. We will see the schematics diagram in a second time. First, let's see in details the boards. I have separated the boards in order to do the reverse engineering. Let's start with this board. There are two identical boards actually. As you can see, this board is actually a PLL. The input is the frequency. And the output is the voltage, which depends on the input frequency. We will see later the purpose of these two boards. This board is a little bit damaged. 
as you can see some resistors are destroyed one pin of this IC is also cut and two transistors are missing despite these damages I have done the reverse engineering of this board also this board here which is complete is a power output board this board permits to drive the four control surfaces in order to change the pitch and the U of the missile so we can see here two regulators I have identified one by measurement one is a 18 volt regulator the second one should be a negative regulator with probably two outputs but for the moment I didn't succeed to make it work the last board is this one so this one is interesting so this is the connection to the rear of the missile we should find on that flat cable the connection to the thermal batteries normally we should find two or three thermal batteries this thing contains normally a few electronic parts I'm not sure but we can see here or something inside it looks like a package of a transistor this is maybe a DC DC converter in order to get the negative voltage but I am not sure there are several wires two are connected to the flight motor this is the ignition actually of the flight motor the other ones I don't know so I have done also the reverse engineering of that board so that board contains two different things the first thing is the differential amplifier for the gyroscope and the second thing is a commutation of some power lines with this part here so this part is very strange it is something which was designed specifically for this missile so we can see here on the top of this part so there are several contacts numbered from 1 to 8 some are closed some are open so I have measured the contacts which are represented closed are actually open and vice versa on the left here there are four terminals but as you can see the two are connected together two terminals on the top and uh, the two others are connected and they have measured also a perfect short circuit between these two pins so I think that this is the second sir, but I am not totally sure. So if you have an idea, or if if maybe you have seen this part, please leave a comment. It should be interesting to know. Otherwise, I can also desolder this part and see what is inside. So this part was manufactured. It is written somewhere. Yes, here by Atlas Aerospace. There is a part number, but. If you enter this thing in internet, you will get absolutely nothing, of course. But this is interesting. Anyway, it is the first time I think we can see the details of electronics of a tow missile. So now let's see in details the circuits. First, I have drew a block schematic of that thing. So this is a block diagram of this tow missile. The input is on the left here. The input is actually a steering signal. This input here is connected to the guidance computer, which is actually on the ground. So it uses uh, two long wires. The maximum length, I think, is 3.7 kilometers or something like that. The wires are made with fine steel and it uses a varnish for insulation the tow missile has actually an automatic guidance system so on the rear of the tow missile there is an infrared light I think it is made with xenon or something like that I think that the light is modulated using mechanical stuff on the ground the guidance computer receives that signal using probably a 4 quadrant detector so it is possible to know the angle between the missile and the target, the guidance computer sends the steering signals to the missile using the two wires and the missile corrects the flight path in order to go to the target this is the general functioning of the missile using the steering signal the missile should be able to turn on the right or on the left and also to go up or down in other words to correct the pitch and the yaw of the missile actually on that line there are two sign signals, one at low frequency and one at high frequency. So we find here two filters. One is a low pass filter in order to isolate one signal, for example, for the pitch control. I don't know which one. There is a high pass filter for the second correction. 
following these filters, we find a comparator which permits uh, to give a square wave. The square wave is fed to a PLL, which is uh, this circuit. There is a VCO here, which generates a square wave at a frequency which depends on the control voltage. The output of the VCO is fed to an AND gate, which is represented by a switch here. The second input of the AND gate is the signal of the comparator. The output of the AND gate is fed to a low-pass filter, which gives the DC signal here. And this DC signal is fed to the VCO input here. So we have the output of the VCO frequency, which is identical to the input frequency here. And at the output of the low-pass filter, uh, we have a DC signal, which depends on the input frequency here. So it is the same for the second channel here. For example, if this one is for the pitch, the second one is for the U. The last thing is the power stage. The output of each amplifier is fed to a system, which permits to modify the position of the flight control surfaces, therefore to modify the attitude of the missile in order to go to the target. So we can see on one channel, there is something which is more complicated than in the other one. Actually, there is something else, which is uh, this uh, thing. So this is a differential amplifier. So the input of this differential amplifier is the output of the gyro, actually. So we can see that the signal of the gyro is fed also uh, to the comparator here. It is in series, actually, uh, with the signal of the VCO here, so this permits to stabilize. So now we can see the schematic of the different boards. This is the schematic diagram of the input filters. The input is here, there is an AC coupling using this capacitor. This is that board. On the board there are actually two different types of transistors. One is a single PNP transistor, or we can see, for example, this one. And the second type of transistor is a dual NPN transistor. So there is no single NPN transistor on that device. This was done, I think, in order to reduce the number of parts, in order to increase the reliability of the missile. Also, the markings are very specific. It is impossible to find a data sheet or something regarding these parts. Even the capacitors have specific markings. As you can see, the value is not written. It is the same for some resistors. As you can see, some resistors are destroyed. But I would like to test this board in order to see the cutoff frequencies and to see if this thing works. So I will replace the missing transistors, which were destroyed, this one and this one. I will reuse some parts of this board. This is a board from an avionics system. So we can see that it uses the same resistors and there are several 20k resistors. This will be okay. And I will reuse also uh, the two PNP transistors since this one and this one. So we can see immediately that uh, this one is a high pass filter. You can see these two capacitors in series, this resistor here. And you can see something opposite. On the bottom circuit, and you have uh, two resistors and the capacitor here. So this is a low pass filter and this is a high pass filter. So there is nothing special. We have uh, different uh, stages in cascade. So each stage uses actually two transistors, one half of a dual NPN transistor and one PNP. Okay, so here's the feedback here. At the end, the signals are fed to two comparators. This permits to give a square wave at each output, one and this one. The next circuit is a PLL. Actually, there are two identical PLLs. They are identical except the frequency, because as we have seen, on the block diagram, we should have two different frequencies in order to activate the yo and the pitch at the same time. So this is a schematic diagram. So this is a classic multi-vibrator using two transistors and cross-coupled capacitors, we can see here. So the frequency is defined by the value of the capacitors, of course, and also by the base current. So we can see that the base current of this transistor, for example, is provided using two resistors, this one and this one, so there are two currents. The first current is a constant current, which is set by the value of this resistor, and this one, this one, and this one. So these three resistors are located here. You can see that these resistors seem selected because they are connected to these lugs here. So this permits to set actually the nominal frequency and these resistors are not the same for the two boards. 
So the first current on the top permits to set the nominal frequency of the VCO, and the second current permits to adjust the frequency of the VCO, so this is this line here. So the output is available on the collector of this transistor, for example, we have the same signal on the other collector. So we can see here a kind of comparator, this is not important, but we can see the end gate here, made with these two diodes. One cathode is connected uh, to the VCO output, the second cathode here is connected actually to the output of the previous uh, schematic. This is uh, the output here, which is a square wave, so one output is fed to one PLL board and the second output is fed to the second PLL board. The mixing of these two signals is present on the collector of this transistor. So this signal is fed to a low-pass filter which is made by this soap pump. We can see there is a first capacitor here and there is also another capacitor in the feedback. So at the output we should have a DC signal and this DC signal is fed to the control input of the VCO which is this line here. So at the output uh, we have a DC signal which uh, depends on the input frequency here and this signal is fed to the output amplifier we will see now. This is a schematic diagram of the power amplifier which is this board actually. We can see four transistors. So one transistor drives one actuator which drives one flight control surface. So this is obviously a p-channel MOSFET transistor, but the body diode is not present. Anyway, we can start by the bottom schematics, it is easier to understand. We can see two op-amps, so obviously they are used as a comparator, there is no feedback. On the left is represented the output of the previous stage, which is the output of the low-pass filter. The output is fed to the non-inverting input of one comparator and to the inverting input of the other one. So this permits to drive one actuator when the signal is positive, at least above a given threshold, and to drive the second actuator when it is below another threshold. And the top circuit is approximately identical, except that we have here the output of the differential amplifier, which is connected to the gyro. So this permits the correction of the yo or the pitch, I don't know exactly. The next circuit is the gyro amplifier. The gyro amplifier is present on that board. The gyro is connected normally to these two inputs. You can see that there is an AC coupling. There are two differential amplifiers in cascade. Okay, so one stage is connected to another one using these two signals here. And there is a feedback using this resistor network here. And we can see something interesting on the bottom here. So we can see a kind of reset circuit, so when the voltage at the base of this Darlington is above a given voltage, so this permits to have a high level on that line, so these two diodes will be on, this permits to drive the base voltage of each transistor to a high level, so this permits to inhibit the amplifier stage, so this permits actually to disconnect the gyro from the regulation. So if we look at the schematics, these are the two wires which are connected to the guidance computer, which is on the ground. My guess is that on the guidance computer there is a resistance which can be connected between these two lines. And when the resistor is connected, this voltage will be closed to the ground. In that case, the amplifier can be used. Otherwise, this voltage will be at high level and this permits to inhibit the amplifier. I think this was done in order to activate or not the gyro. Maybe it is for something else, I don't know. And this signal, of course, is fed to the filters we have seen before. This circuit is a schematic diagram of the parts and the signal around this strange part here. So we can see this part made with the contacts here, 1 to 8. And these four terminals are actually these four pins here. Currently there is a short circuit between these two things. The switches are represented in the position we can see on this part, but actually the actual state of each switch is reversed regarding this position indicated on that part. So that means that for example switches 7 and 8 are open. Also if I Take a magnet, so this is a samarium cobalt magnet, so something strong. So I can see that there is something which is metallic just on that position. It is 
right here. You can see it is uh, difficult to, to move uh, this, this magnet. And there is another thing just here. So there is something metallic on that area here, and another one here, and uh, nothing on that side. Okay, so there are two things here, but I don't know what exactly. So that's all for today. Next time I will try to repair the boards which are damaged, and I will try to make some tests on that thing. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye.